Hi guys and welcome back. This is part 7 of my Unreal Engine 4 multiplayer FPS course. If you guys haven't checked out the previous parts, make sure you do. Links to those will be down in the video description. Also down there will be a link to my Discord server. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions, I would be more than happy to answer your queries over there. So make sure you guys do join my Discord server. So now let's begin. In the previous part, I had created the code which was required to transition from a lobby to an actual match. Now today we'll be heading back into the main menu and we are going to be creating the friends list. So it's really easy to do it. I'll show you guys how to do it. There, there are no videos on this so I'll just do it. Now head into your actual content folder. Right click and just create a new folder and call this one structs. Open that up and this is just my way of handling it you could of course do it directly so right click go to blueprints structure and we are going to be calling this one steam friend save that open up steam friend and here we want to have three members first one is going to be the steam id the second one is going to be the name of the player oops i spelled that wrong name of the player and the third one is going to be his avatar. The reason I'm doing this is just so that I can directly get all the members from the struct rather than calling the functions. The more you avoid calling functions, the better it is. So for the name, make this of type string and for the avatar, make this of type texture 2D. So it should be having texture 2D somewhere. Just save that and now head back into Axel content head into UI and head into your main menu. So now inside the main menu widget blueprint, drag in a vertical box. Of course you could choose not to copy the design aspects of it. It's completely up to you. Just make this of a suitable size for a friends list. Now add in a border and add in a scroll box. Once we have both of these, uh, select them and set those to fill. And for the border, I'll just set it to a small value such as 0 0.1. Maybe that's a bit big too. So 0 0.09, 0 0.075 should be fine. That's enough for me right now. So it does not take up too much of the screen. So I guess I'm more than happy with the 0.1. Now, I usually like to change the brush color to something close to black. It's usually more pleasing to the eye. Then what I want you guys to do is select the vertical box, rename that to friends. We already have a variable so let's rename that to friends list. And rename the scroll box to friends list scroll. And for the border we'll leave that as is. Grab the vertical box, move it all the way down here and just so that the vertical box stays aligned, what you want to do is select it, select friends list and under anchors, select this anchor over here and just drag this to wherever you feel it should stay. And once you're done with that, you can go ahead and add in a horizontal box. And over here you can add in a button or first let's add in some text and let's add in a button. Now this button is just going to refresh so let's just set these two to fill as well and we obviously want the text to take up a lot more space than refresh so we'll set that to a higher value. Set this to be center aligned looks neat so change the font according to your wish not so small and we are going to change the text later on add in another text block here so select text drag this inside the button and we can call this one refresh and we don't need this to be of a large font size and again let's just change the background color maybe to something else maybe completely black this time so when you click on this, it's going to refresh the friends list. 
Now let's set up the animation for the list to actually go up. So one thing that I could do is select this vertical box or actually the border and I want to wrap this with a button and set that to fill and set the padding to zero. Now what this will allow us to do is actually get the functionality so that you can click on this text over here and the list is going to go up. So for the button we are going to be calling this open list or open friends list to be a bit more precise. Compile that, save that and now if you go ahead and play this as a standalone make sure you have steam open in the background and before you do that let's actually set up a click event. So on clicked we are going to just simply print a string and yeah on begin play let's just uh, get player controller or I should say on event construct set show mouse cursor set that to true let's just play it and as you guys can see it prints out hello every time you click on this and it doesn't print hello when you click on refresh so it works as we intended to but as you can see clearly you can see the buttons background somewhat and it doesn't look that nice so what we can do is first of all make sure the padding is set to zero everywhere and even now you can still see a bit of the background so select the button and for the background color change the alpha value all the way down to zero or you could uh, set it to the same color as this so that it blends in either way it's up to you before all of that we, we shall set up the actual friends list functionality so first i want to create a function now the way I like to handle this is creating a function library. In the previous parts we went over what a macro library is used for. So things like this where you have multiple execution pin for input and outputs. In those cases or where you have uh, latent nodes you would use a macro library. Whereas for things like what we are going to do now you would use a function library. So head into blueprints blueprint function library and name that bp underscore function library open that up and over here I want to create a function now the first function is going to be get friends it's going to be very simple and you want to set this to pure so let me just explain what a pure function is. Basically a pure function is just a function without an execution pin and the output of a pure function is not cached. So let's say for example this is a normal function and let's say you use this value here the return value in two different places. The function is only called once but let's say for example you had b logged on and you use the return value in two different places. b logged on is actually called twice. So that's the difference between a pure and a regular function. Now let's actually start with our friends list. The video is getting very lengthy so I'll just create the function and we'll, we shall continue in the next part. So first of all we want to get steam friends. From here we want to get the friend count. I know this is a very unintuitive way but this is the only way to do it through the steam API not sure why it's set up like this so once you get the friend count we want to iterate through each of our friends and for the friend flags the reason I put it in inputs is so that we can reuse this function in multiple places if we had fixed the friend flags then we we had to create separate functions for each one I'll get into friend flags so we want to use a for loop now so just use a regular for loop and do minus one for the return value so we want to loop through from 0 to count minus 1 and for each of these friends we want to get the friend by the index so we can use the same flag I'll show you guys how to do that so get friend by index and for the flags drag this back in and for the friend index drag this inside of index here 
and now we have access to the person's team id and using that we can get the persona name so get friend persona name drag that back into steam friends we shall just copy that just to keep things clean and get his avatar as well we can get a medium sized avatar drag that back in and remember we had created a struct so create a new local variable of type fr uh, steam friend uh, just check the type over here it's the same struct which we had created so this one is going to be friends list array drag this in and type in add right click split the struct pin and for the steam id plug this into the friend which we get plug the execution pin into the loop body let the name be his name and the avatar be his avatar and on completed we want to drag in a return node and over here we want to plug this into the return node and let's just uh, rename the output to friends list or just friends so that's pretty much it we should in theory be getting all of our friends now inside here just for testing purposes we can get our friends list function so get friends and for the flags this is basically about whether you want to select all your blocked friends or you want to select your immediate friends we want to select immediate friends so only our friends are there and just please do not do this mistake of iterating through this because this is a pure function so it's going to be called each time so do not do this so in case you want to get away with it the way you can do it is by not setting this to be a pure function if you compile that now you can call this freely now set this one uh, sorry iterate through this and split the struct pin and just for testing purposes let's just uh, print out their names compile that and play it as a standalone game if you have done everything correctly if you click on this you should get all of your friends names okay guys so that's it for this video thanks for watching if you guys did learn something new and if you did enjoy the video make sure you guys do leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos goodbye